So do not watch this part. Huh, so what do you know? New batteries. That's what we're looking for when we do load test. They should be at 575 cold cranking amps and a maximum 675. I was getting a hard crank. But yeah, we'll find out. So that's what we're gonna do. cranking you have to crack open each uh, fuel injector and let the fuel run out and then close it back off I did that the other day like I said with my buddy who didn't want to be filmed I have a load tester and we are going to check the load the cold cranking amps which is the power it takes to turn over these big engines I'm gonna load test each battery um, I already hit them with the voltmeter they're showing fully charged but if the cells are damaged in any way inside the batteries then it won't, the cold cranking amps could be all screwed up. The previous owner moved out of town and had let the brand new batteries run completely dry while they were on the charger. So I suspect that's going to be the culprit. We didn't show you what happened behind the camera, but we had a couple options to go with. I will break down the cost of the project and show you how much we could have spent and how much we actually spent on this project at the end of this video. To all my sailboat friends, whatever you do, fast forward in this section. These fossil fuel burning beasts are going to ruin your day. So do not watch this part. Alrighty, let's do this. I decided to put some light on this subject. Definitely need to install some lights down here. More than what I got. I suspect they're all going to be like that. That's a little better. Okay, so as I suspected, they're running about... Let's... Big warning on the instructions don't touch the housing it will be hot they're right I actually could just confirm that it's good to know the instructions are right so it looks like they're hitting 400 cold cranking amps so we're almost almost in the weak zone so when I hooked up the battery it first tells me how many volts and how you read this is this top section right here is for six volt batteries from seven to 16 this second half is for 12 volt so actually let me see I'll try to hook up to the other side just let this thing cool down for a sec but uh, so it would come up and the needle would be right in right in about there reading the volts of my battery. And then when you hit this button, it puts a load on the battery. And so on load, the port side dropped all the way to 400, which is, see how it steps? It's at the second step.
So you can see the needle's hitting just above 12. When I push the button, this button, and put load on it, she drops. That's what we're looking for when we do load test. And it's telling me the batteries suck, which I suspect. All right, later. Okay, so what you might have seen me doing was trace wires, and the reason why I'm tracing wires is because I'm trying to figure out what kind of battery system we got here, what somebody did, so put those away for now. So this is what I discovered in my boat paperwork, and if I zoom in, this says current, and it's kind of an incomplete sketch. This was all done by a previous owner, a previous owner. And then this says desired, and this is the whole layout, which is nice. So this would be the house side, this would be the cranking side. This is your battery switch. Um, I'm running by battery isolators also, and then there's my charger. And then these are gonna be uh, your representative of the engine. This would be your alternator feed, going back to the isolators, and then your starter, which goes to that. So anyway. So I'm trying to figure it out. I wanted to verify this. Okay, so I went downstairs and looked. And I believe how the system is set up is the house goes to number two. Uh, this uh, starting cranking goes to one. So that's how. So technically there is a backup, but it's your house. Which I don't think is ideal, so I'm gonna look at my boat owner's mechanical and electrical. Now what I did was I put tabs on everything so I can quickly get to it. So we're gonna go to battery. Optimum battery and alternator setup for a cruise boat is this one. They're suggesting you have your house circuit come in on one switch and your cranking circuit on a totally isolated switch, but then your number two post is combined, which bridges your house over if you need it. So what are they up to? Uh, I just checked the house side of the batteries, uh -huh. and they're rated at 575 cold cranking amps. Now, house batteries we're not using for cranking amps, but just to give you an idea of what they were when, or what they should be at. They should be at 575 cold cranking amps and a maximum 675, or 525 and 675. Anyway, uh, so I checked the house side because it's just easy to get to. And wouldn't you know it, 200. We can't spend all the money. But we don't have any to spend, so it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> Welcome to owning the boat. Yep. It's okay. But you know what we'll do though, is because I don't think, in my opinion, they didn't put the right batteries in. So those are group 21 batteries, 24 batteries, group 24. So the group is the size of the battery. It has to do with the charging, cold cranking amps, like all these things. But anyway, I simplify it and I just think of group number is the size of the battery. So group 24 is like your automotive battery, mm -hmm. kind of like that size. Mm -hmm. And then it starts jumping up from there. I believe these big beast Perkins they need either 8Ds, which are batteries that are about that long, mm -hmm. or you can switch over to, I know I've read on some of the uh, diesel forums that they say you can run a group 31, which is like one and a half times the size of a car battery. Um, and these are 24s, and they're a marine battery, but what you should on the house side should be a deep cell battery, mm -hmm. which means it, its charging rate is, is, is much deeper. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a longer lasting, mm -hmm. it's designed to hold its charge for a lot longer. You don't want that on your cranking side. 
So it means even the current fitting is fine, right? But they just like would like to make it different. Or well, no, you make it right. If we're in there doing that, that's where the boat projects. You know, you start one project, it leads into like ten other projects. Mm -hmm. That's things. If you're already down there tearing out well, I guess the batteries so. yes. and putting new batteries in, it has black tape wrapped around it, and that's just black tapes. There's <laughs> there's no no reason we should be using black tape to secure a uh, connection mm -hmm. out on a boat. So houses, everything, your electronics run off, your mm -hmm. lights, everything like that mm -hmm. when you're not plugged in. You know, it's not one yes, tent, it's not like your house. Um, even though they call it a house, which is damn near confusing to me. Why the hell did they call it a house? But then it's not like your house. It's using 12 volt direct current instead of 110 alternating current. Huh, so what do you do now? New batteries. And now let's go back to the numbers. When we realized that we have a battery problem, we had two options to go with. The first one was to hire somebody to come and load these batteries, check what the problem was and fix it. And the second option was to do it ourselves. Let's look at the numbers and compare the cost. If you're looking into hiring a marine mechanic, he is charging approximately $130 per hour. We will need approximately two hours to troubleshoot batteries and see what is happening and the total cost will be around $260. He does charge for his travel time and travel time is around 8.6 miles. He charges $2 per mile and it brings us to $14. The mechanic I contacted charges preparation fee and it's flat fee of $39. So far our total is $312. Now let's open the products. I know that he'll have to replace batteries and the approximate cost for each battery is $500. We need three, which will bring us to a total of $1,500. And of course, we will have to pay for his labor. If you remember, he charges $130 per hour. We're looking into about three hours of work, the total of $390. And again, he's charging the flat preparation fee of $39. If you look at the total project cost, it's $2,241. Let's look at the actual money we have spent on this project. As I said earlier, if you're looking into hiring someone, you're probably going to spend around $2,000 or $2,200, including the cost of the parts. If you are going to do the work yourself, we spent $37 on a tester and we spent $1,500 on actual batteries, which brings us to a total of $1,537. If you look at the difference, and the difference you can see it right here, it's $700. We actually chose to do the job ourselves, which was our best option. So the total money we spent on this project, $1,537, and we saved $704. So the difference is $704.